Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. Every time you are in need of provoking and accessing the prophetic from a man of God, a vessel, there are three requirements. Are you ready? Number one, discernment. Discernment. That is the first key. You cannot receive from a man of God. You cannot receive from an anointed vessel when you do not discern what they represent. In John chapter 4 and verse 19, Jesus was with a woman who was a harlot at the well. The Bible, was, the Bible talks about Jesus discussing with her. And as Jesus began to speak, the woman was just, he was doing something to her perception. And by the time we get to verse 19, the Bible says, the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. You started as a stranger, maybe somebody who will be my seventh husband. When I saw you, I thought you were like the five, the sixth there. And so I was preparing myself to hear what you have to say. But in the midst of the discussion, I've seen that this one, you came to rescue me, not to marry me. I perceive that you are a prophet. Are we together? In 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 and 9, 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 and 9, the Bible talks about the woman in Shunem, the Shunammite woman we call her, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, and there was a great woman, and the Bible says she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in tether to eat bread verse 9 and she and she said to her husband behold now i perceive that this is an holy man of god which passed by us continually discernment discernment do you know why you need to discern because men are men but you must be able to discern the grace that works in their lives above and beyond their humanity. You may be married to your wife and then God has granted her grace to be prophetic. That there is a grace from her. If you can look beyond her being just your wife, there is something God can use her to bring to your life. Familiarity has destroyed many people from receiving the prophetic from vessels. Number two honor honor this is a house of honor this is not new to you honor when you read the same second kings chapter 4 from verse 10 to 13 second kings 4 10 to 13 having discerned that he's a holy man of god and a prophet of god she did not stop there she made a proposal to her husband let us make a little chamber i pray thee on the wall and let's set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be wherever he comes to us he shall turn in hither 11. It says, and it fell on a day that he came and he turned to the chamber and he lay there. They did this continually, verse 12. And he said to Gehazi, now this always happens. Every time honor, I have taught you that honor is the key to access. This woman did not even make any request. She just honored the man having perceived that he was a man of God. And the prophet said, no, it's against the law of honor that this family keeps showing me honor without something coming from me to them. He called on Gehazi, his servant. He said, call the Shunammite woman. And when they had called her, she stood before him. 13. He said, she said unto him, he said unto him, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? would you want me to speak to the king or to the captain of the host and she said i dwell among my own people and if you read onwards you will see that gehazi now told elisha that i notice as wealthy as this family is there is a bot in this family they have not enjoyed the miracle of fruitfulness and he said that's right you will never see the woman asking for a child the woman did not ask for a child. She only honored a prophetic vessel and the prophet said, no, I must search what is not working in your life. And the prophet on his own, he said, by this time, 
accord no 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 according to the time of life you shall embrace a son and it happened as the prophet prophesied there are many things let me tell you you will not need to ask men and women of God to pray for you for if you understand discernment and honor now I know that again I always like to balance teachings like this because many times when we men of God find teachings like this we press it into people don't come and meet a man of God empty-handed it is scriptural but it is not a burden it should be by revelation and delight knowing that you see joy uh, and honor are principles that release the prophetic from the bowels of the spirit but it is not by manipulation I've been surprised at times where people want to see me and they're afraid and saying okay we we couldn't see you because there's nothing in our hand I said what is what's the meaning of that no honor is not just about giving things it's holding somebody in high esteem as touching what God has done it is good to honor people as much as God has blessed you vessels of, of glory but not to put yourself under uh, um, uh, under duress and I, I, no man of God who loves God and is a man of integrity and serious with this work will tell you if you don't have something you cannot come to me no freely we have received the Bible says freely to give are we together so discernment and then honor in 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. This was Saul. They were going to look for their donkey, remember? And then the Bible says, Behold, the servant said, There is in this city a man of God. And the Bible calls him an honorable man. All that he saith co surely comes to pass. Now, let us go thither. Per adventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. And Saul said to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? For the bread is spent in our vessel, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? That was the limitation. He said, listen, listen, if, if this man has that level of credibility, then it must have come through deep interaction with the spirit. And we should be able to carry something that represents an expression of honor. And then Saul said to his servant, but behold, if we go, go to verse 8, please. Verse 8. And the servant answered Saul again and said, behold, I have here at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver. And I will give to the man to tell us our way. And that, that became what they had and they left. And you know the rest. Through that honor as they got there, before he would even arrive to tell, let me tell you this, look up please. No genuine man of God who has been helped by God and is determined to do ministry with integrity will sit down and pressure people over their resources. Do you know that while they got to the gate of Samaria, as soon as they saw Samuel, he did not look at their hand. He said, go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. It was not about the seed. It was about honor to give him access. Hallelujah. There are many, many people who are very greedy and very stingy. They can go to men of God. Men of God will pray for them, do everything, even feed them and give them money. And some of them are very wealthy people. You see, and they, they cannot, the, 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 the law of honor, they don't practice it. It's wrong. It's not about me. I'm not saying you should give me money. Believe me. But I'm telling you that it is a principle, learn it as a spiritual principle. You want to provoke the grace upon an anointed vessel, have the discernment to always honor. There are people who want to go and see politicians. You are not even sure of what they will tell you. Some of them will buy a car, some of them will buy a house and say, I have five estates, uh, honorable, I just thought that, uh, uh, let me just give you a recharge card. And the recharge card is one estate. And they come to a church and they see the church struggling. And yet the man is anointed. Nothing to be ashamed of, he's growing. And they know that with, with a simple check, and it will not mean anything to them. There are people who can build churches, 10 churches at a go and it will not scratch their, fi their finances and yet they will come and meet a man of God and say I hope you have time because 
I, my problem I need one hour and the man says okay I'm listening to you oh am I going to do this he says go am I going to and then they go and get blessed and they say thank you and they spend their money on psychophants and ignore those that were used by God to bless them there is a balance while on one hand the assignment of not of priesthood is not tax collection we are not there sent by God to be collecting money from people but I have to educate you as touching doctrine make it a principle and a point of duty that as much as God grants you grace do not go and see a man of God with a proven track record who you trust the investment of the spirit upon his life empty-handed it is spiritual carelessness I never God is my witness I have never and I will never go and meet any of the fathers of faith and just go and meet them and say even if I stumble across them by mistake I will not do that it is not human worship you don't know what leaves the spirit of people when they are happy go and ask Isaac why will Isaac I hope you know that the 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 goat or the ram that they caught was Isaac's own from his farm that he ate so he already had it but he said go leave the one in my house go let it let it let it compel something from you make venison such as I love Bring it to me. I want to bless you. Let me tell you the truth. As much as I don't, I'm not really into, you know, money, money, all of these things. It's not, it's none of my business. With I don't put people on, under pressure. But I tell you the truth by God. There are sacrifices and there are things that people have done for me. I have found myself, even to my surprise, blessing them and prophesying to them from the depth of my heart and subconsciously paying attention to their needs as busy as I am you see I'm, I'm I'm being sincere and honest with you I love everybody but you'll be making a mistake believing I give everybody equal attention it's not even something that I planned there are people because of the depth of their honor their sacrifice from their heart there are families that if they call on me even if it is in tears I will get up and make sure I respond to them because of the level of spiritual sacrifice it is the same thing with us men of God everybody can call on God but it looks like God is hearing others and not hearing others the key is sacrifice I would be lying to you if I don't teach you this Native doctors will not even hear you. Go out. When you, your trouble really hits you, you will look for what to buy and bring for me. But in the church, we don't do that. But believers are becoming careless just because we are pointing imbalances here. I will not tell you what I'm not doing. In fact, as a principle, I will never stand up and go to any family, even if it's a family that looks up to me. It is a principle to always greet people at the gates with honor. Some of you, even your children, this law of honor has not worked in your life. You will go to a restaurant holding three children. They will stand outside while you are eating. You will finish and carry extra water and say, hey, let's go. This law of honor must, must work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will be disappointed if you have been in Koinonia and you claim to be connected here. And you have, I'm not saying to me, I wish I were not the one preaching this. You see, it's very difficult to tell the truth of this sort, especially if you are the one who is, is, you know, you are saying it in your own platform. But I ought to tell you the truth. When your hands are close to honor, your destiny will be close to access. Honor. You want to receive from prophetic vessels? If you do not find them worthy of your attention, then leave them in peace but for as long as you are determined to engage them respect what they represent and honor your way into the deepest bowels of the prophetic number three faith three rules of engagement from receiving from prophetic vessels number one discernment number two honor number three faith faith means you have to believe that God is able to use them to speak to you. Second Chronicles 2020. We're wrapping up. 2020. Second Chronicles. They rose up early in the morning and they went into the wilderness of Tekoa. 
the Bible says, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, old Koinonia, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. He says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Then believe. He didn't just say, Listen, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. In John chapter 2 from verse 5, John chapter 2 from verse 5, the Bible says the wedding in Cana now, wine had finished and they all came to Jesus and the mother told them, he said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Verse 6, now he begins to speak, reading to 8, and there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three frackings apiece. Seven, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots. You want to see a miracle? Take a step of faith by believing in my word. Fill the water pots with water. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a huge risk. And they filled them up to the brim. Obedience, faith. Verse 8. Now he takes it deeper. He says, now draw out. As at the time you are drawing out, what you are seeing is water. But bear it and take the risk at my word. Be on your way to go to the governor. Do you know they would kill those people if that water did not turn to wine? You know in those days they didn't forgive. Straight, they would just hang them or kill them or do all kinds of things. I'm sure those guys were moving and saying, what is this now? We came for reception, a wedding that is not even our own. This guy is now leading us to go and die for nothing. Listen to me. Whether you are Naaman or you are the one in need of an embarrassment to be averted from your wedding, the moment you come to a prophetic vessel, be ready to hear instruction and be ready to act. There are times I have come here to give us prophetic instructions to fast, to sow, to listen. And there are many people who have embraced it as touching the voice of God. Some of you here with simplicity of heart and meekness have received this prophetic voice as touching the grace of God and you have seen what it has happened. But there are people who are too intellectual or too scientific or too rich or too wise in their own understanding. You see, when you are flying a plane, you have to depend on the intelligence of the captain and the crew. You are not at liberty as, as, as gigantic as that plane or that ship is. There is only one man that controls that flight. And sometimes he can tell you we're about to approach turbulence. So make sure you put on your seatbelt. Please minimize any other thing. If you are distributing food, stop for the moment. He knows what he's saying. It is for you to believe. Sometimes even a minute or two after he's spoken, you will not sense any bump. And then all of a sudden, it becomes bumpy. Because by reason of being pilot, he has the privilege of sight and the privilege of all kinds of things within the cockpit there and you know that can help to direct him you are following and so you listen africa hear me as much as we are trusting god to correct some of the sad things that are happening with the prophetic let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the west let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the east westernization made many people in the west and in europe to crucify their prophets they came up with a point where they felt john knox what can you say em bounds what can you say charles g finney what can you say we have a government we have economists we have intellectuals and right now some of those regions are nationally barren of prophetic voices there are regions in the earth where there are no prophetic and apostolic voices because the people made it they sowed the seed of killing and destroying the prophetic Africa I understand that many lives have been wrecked because of the mismanagement of the prophetic I understand I know that there are many people who have reason to communicate the prophetic barring of integrity God is helping all of us but I can tell you this is a clarion call to Africa we need to be careful Nigeria we need to be careful do not destroy your prophets it is a trap you owe it to pray for the prophets and pray for purity of grace, purity of perception, purity of character and truthfulness in serving God. But can I tell you, a nation, a church, a region that shuts down its prophetic has shut down a major advantage in their lives.
I am a product of the prophetic. The fathers of faith have spoken over my life. I have watched the prophetic through my life lift and raise many people. And chiefest of all, we are saved by the word. We are transformed by the word. The word of God said it, that if we pay attention to this, we will be transformed. We believed in that prophetic truth. Look what our lives have become. We are about to pray. Because the spirit spirit said, brood brood is war was in my bones. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire.